It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us to tell some of her story and the book that she's put together, which is amazing, Finding Beauty in Ashes, Angel Sent in Our Darkest Hour, is Mary Hilger. Thank you for being here, Mary. Thank you very much for asking me. Uh, before we get too much into the book, you are known around the diocese as an artist. When did you first start to think that art was more than just a, a hobby, but might be something that you would consider as a, a career and a passion? Well, of course, I went the the regular road of I went to college and became an art teacher, but becoming the artist came with a deep conversion in my heart and a retreat where I asked God how I could serve Him better with my gifts. And with that prayer, next thing you know, I'm sitting there drawing all these images of Jesus and Pope John Paul II and Mother Teresa, and, and I'm hopping on a plane going to India and all these things started happening, and I realized art was not art anymore. Art was a prayer. So it transformed into an art ministry. When, when you talk about that, I, I think a lot of people might see art as just something pretty. Some people might see all art as spiritual art. Like it's, if it's True. beauty, it reveals God. True. But you're saying very specifically, like this is it's, ministry, but it's also it's spiritual art that you're creating. Yes. And, and when I started drawing for people in front of them with the chalk drawings, that was from a guy named Bob, from I hope I can mention his name, uh-huh. from St. Vincent's. And he asked me if I could draw the crucifixion. And I said, sure. And I gave him a sketch. He goes, now can you do it in 10 minutes? in front of the teens <laughs> and I had just come back from India gifting Sister Normala the picture of Mother Teresa and I, I was so ripe you know it was like I was had mm. surrendered and I said okay and so when I got there it was amazing that watching the teens just pour their tears out and, and hug me and embrace me after I did the drawing I had this vow with God on the way home I'm like I'm doing this the rest of my life yeah. so it became like it has to become something that affects another person, you know, in the spiritual world. And it seems to do that through the Holy Spirit. It's yeah. it's not me up there drawing. I'm in a zone. <laughs> do you have a favorite art piece that you've created? Oh, wow. I don't know. I love my Mother Teresa's, of course. Uh-huh. There's a Jesus image that I did. And, and actually, Redeemer Radio used it for Holy Cards one year right. for your share And that's one of my favorites. Yeah. And I love my Pietas. <laughs> See, they're, they, they're based on holy people and holy images. Yeah. And the book that you wrote was originally going to be about your art, but kind yes. of took a, a detour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's called Finding Beauty in Ashes, Angels Sent in Our Darkest Hour. I want to talk about the beauty and the angels. But before we do, you want to tell us a little bit of the story of the, the ashes and the darkest hour? Yeah, the, the ashes were when John collapsed. My husband, Deacon John Hilger, and I were going on a Viking cruise to Germany. We were on the boat for eight hours, and he collapsed. And it's such a long story. <laughs> they have to read the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to do with how I was so broken and so taken back when he went down. I couldn't believe it was happening. Um, I was in a fog and to know that my daughters found a way to fly over to Amsterdam where we were in the hospital where John was supposed to be recuperating mm-hmm. was so amazing. But it was more than just my daughters coming. It was the strangers that approached me in this whole experience that were Jesus to me, that embraced me with their hearts and did such kind things for me and and helped give me strength. I just felt God was walking with me through this brokenness that I was experiencing because no one ever wants to believe, oh, this happens to other people. It doesn't mm. happen to me. So it, it was rough. Was it always that way or did you have a time where you felt abandoned? You're like, Why is this happening? Or did you always feel a, a sense of comfort? Um. I've had a philosophy that good things come from bad. Hmm. Any bad thing that's ever happened to me where I have been horrified and things through our life, which some of them are in the book, it, it's like things were taken away from us, and but they were earthly things. Mm-hmm. But I always could count on God lifting me up 
and getting me where I needed to be. But there were moments, we all have moments, when we think, where are you, God? Where are you? And I've always realized that God takes everything, good or bad, and makes good out of it. He just always does. Sometimes we don't see it like when we're going through it, Mm -hmm. but later on we see it. But the uncanny thing about this story is I felt him immediately. I think I've been on this spiritual journey for quite a while, and I've learned to lean on him when things don't go right. Did I not feel like, wow, you know, this is the worst thing you could do to me, God? Yeah, my love of my life and friend and everything taken from me, but he comforts us through the hand and compassion of others. And like I said, it wasn't just my family and friends. It was these strangers that walked into my life from the moment he went down. Yeah. We're talking with Mary Hilger. The book is Finding Beauty in Ashes, Angels Sent in Our Darkest Hour. And I mentioned that this was originally going to be a book about your art. Yes. At what point did you shift your focus and say, (laughs) you know what? That's not what this book is going to be about. This is funny because... When John passed away, my girls said, Mom, you know, you have this, I want a a Lily Grant to write this book. And I was supposed to go to a writing conference in Italy. Hmm. And they go, Mom, don't cancel that. You have to move on. You need to do that. Well, this is going to be two months after John passed away. When did I decide to shift? It was the night before I got on the plane. Hmm. And I called the people at Lily and I said, I don't know what's happening to me right now. I've never experienced anything quite so traumatic as losing my loved one. But God is telling me I need to write a book about his death because he was so present in this whole situation. And they said, sure, because that's your heart. You need to write what's in your heart. The other book will come and the other book will come. Eventually, that'll be my other book that'll come out, but who knows when that's going to be. I, I need a break. Yeah. <laughs> but it was literally, uh, when was that? June 9th. I, I switched gears. I'm on the plane and I'm typing in my little mini pad the story. Um, I just got this story out of my heart and just, you know, how you can talk into the phone and speakerphone. And I told the story. It was horrible draft. It was uh-huh. awful, but it was what happened. Yeah. And they say when you do write something about your grief, you need to do it when it's raw, hmm. right now. This had to be done now. And God had to have given me the strength to do that. The man that helped me in Italy was amazing. He took this horrible draft and he interviewed me about my life, about my children, about my husband. So he says, you know, Mary, you are a writer. We are all writers. We are all storytellers. I'm a big time storyteller. Sometimes we think we can't put it on paper. And he says, all you have to do is write it down. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh (laughs) So it was early on that I realized I had to switch over to this book. And then This lady named Kathy Clemmer was amazing. She came into my life, and she's really good uh, with the English language, And she, but she did more than that. She was my counselor. Mm. She took care of me. She ministered to me that first year after John's death, and every Thursday night, we got together for nine months and wrote this book, and um, it was great. It was great to rewrite and rewrite, because when we did that, it confirmed that this really did happen. And mm-hmm. I think that was the cathartic part of this process was being able to say it out loud. Yeah. This is really what happened. And so it was it was a beautiful process, a difficult one. <laughs> yeah. So you talk about it being cathartic and therapeutic. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you would recommend somebody that's grieving I, yeah. loss to <clears throat> to write, even if they're not, not going to publish it or exactly. anything like that, but to, they, to they write out have the to, story? They, I think when you write and journal, that it, it just makes it concrete. Yeah. And, um, and doing it with another person, probably. It not, was really nice doing yeah. it with another person, you know. I just felt like she was my counselor. Yeah. Beautiful lady. And that's what I learned from these people who knew how to write. They said, what did that feel like? Mm-hmm. What did that smell like? What did you see? You know, all those things, those details that you should put into a story. That's what they taught me the most was just let it all out. You know, when I was walking down the street through Amsterdam after I'd been in the hospital for two days, what did that feel like? Right. Of course, I cry. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'd say, what that did really feel like? You know, it's just like somebody actually 
ripped me in two Mm -hmm. when it happened. But I also experienced such peace with God when John actually passed. I didn't hear the crying of my children. I heard silence. And I was almost like with him as he he was making his transition into his new life. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's still very present, so very present in my life and my grandkids' life. And it's still a beautiful journey, you know. And I think if as you're listening to me, I think you're hearing this is beauty in the sense that God takes all bad stuff and he makes beautiful stuff out of it. Yeah. He, he doesn't waste anything hmm. that happens in our life. It may seem awful when we're going through it. We think, really? Is this, <laughs> is this what you want me to go through? But when you go through it, it makes you stronger. It makes you better. It makes you more compassionate. I'm more compassionate to other people who are going through the same kind of situation. I mean, I've never lost a spouse before, and when somebody does, my heart just bleeds for them. Mm-hmm. So, What is your hope for the book, for the person that reads the book? What do you, what do you hope they get out of it? Well, like I said, we invoke the Holy Spirit. So, it's whatever he thinks should happen. Mm-hmm. So when I've I've sold like about four hundred books so far, yeah. and these people who read it, the people who are either going through grief mm-hmm. or have lost somebody even twenty years ago, have come back to tell me how much strength they gain from knowing about the strength that God gave me in this trying time, mm-hmm. and the faith. I, I think the book is so filled with what beautiful faith my husband had and was he perfect no (laughs) none of us are perfect but in the end he was being perfected and i have to say people realize when they read this book that it was his suffering that made him beautiful Hmm. it brought him to christ and that unconditional love that was the first thing i thought of when he passed was i'll never ever be able to find anybody that has such unconditional love and would go out to strangers and share his love for Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think it's John's character, his personality and his faith are really projected throughout this whole book. And and I if nothing else, I hope it builds somebody up for their faith that they realize that when they go through a very, very difficult time, they can get through it, but they have to seek to God, you know, for that comfort. And and sometimes people are angry at God when this happens. And and did I have anger? I, I didn't really have anger. I was just, like, sad. Mm. <laughs> but I, I just think it's all different for whoever reads it. Sure. And, and there's been some other things that people have shared, but we yeah. don't have that much time. <laughs> yeah, actually, and I want to make sure people know where they can get a copy of the book, but also oh, yes. uh, see your artwork by Prince and yeah. find out oh. more about the great stuff that you guys are doing over there. and So, <laughs> where, where should we send people for that? If they want a signed book, they should reach me and email me, hilger8 at aol.com. Okay. Or they can go to my website, which is www.spiritualhands.org. Mm-hmm. And I was having a difficult time keeping up with the sales, so I went ahead and put it on Amazon. Uh-huh. If you want one fast for Christmas or something, you can just order it on Amazon. It's a little bit different pricing. It's a little bit more. Um, it's $20 on Amazon. If they buy it through me, it's $15. But then I have to add on shipping if, if I ship it. Uh-huh. Um, so it's, it's bigger than me. I don't know where God's taking me with this and but anything they need to know about what's going on with my ministry is on my website and spiritualhands.org we'll yes there. yes all right again the book is called finding beauty in ashes angels sent in our darkest hour thank you so much mary thank hilger you. for sharing just a, a little bit of your story and there's mm-hmm. so much more to, to share but people have to read the book yes there you go <laughs> right, thanks mary <laughs> thank you and have a blessed holiday and merry christmas <laughs> as it comes before.